Any else here? All right. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, December 7, 2023 planning board meeting. We could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, <coughs> indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> all right, introduction to board members. To the far left, I have Paul Amatucci, Jerry Graybill, myself, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, Les Bodwell, and Rick Raines. We also have Iris Griffith, the Code Enforcement Officer, <coughs> Terry Wilson, the Assistant to Coding and Planning, and Hannah Watson from SMPDC. All right. First is the public hearing. We'll open that for Integrity Construction, Conditional Use, 500 Portland Street, R72, Lot 17, Zone RCI. You want to just come up and just give us a brief description? <coughs> Yes. Yeah. Good evening. We're just uh, seeking a conditional use for the building over at 500. I'm looking to put in a cabinetry shop. It was never outlined in the original plan, so we just got to identify the specific use. Okay. Now, is there anyone that wants to make a comment? <coughs> so we just opened up the public hearing for the 500 Portland Street. So if you guys have any comments, um, now is the time. Okay. Okay. Well, seeing how no one else is here, so um, I'll make a motion that we close the public hearing. I will second. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? Okay. <clears throat> Next is the public comment. Good evening. Tom Wright, 96 Cemetery Road. Um, I was unable to make the uh, meeting when you had the introduction to the community garden space. I was out of town at the time, and uh, my laptop wouldn't send the email out I wanted you guys to all read before that meeting, so here I am tonight. <laughs> um, I just want to give a, a background on that piece of property. Um, it's the piece of property up behind the police station and the fire station, the site of the old Estabrook School is when the Hussey School was built and uh, the school system no longer needed that school, the town acquired it again, uh, moved the uh, police station into the lower part, the Doran section of it. And <clears throat> after that, the rest of it just sat there. The building itself, the Estabrook School itself, was used for storage, for public works. Um, and the police and the fire used it for their training. It was quite a mess in there. Um, but as, as far back as 12 or 13 years ago, um, the Downtown Vision Committee, which was the precursor to the Envision Bureau Committee, um, were holding a series of meetings to identify properties in the downtown core area that would be vital to you know, developing the downtown and revitalizing it. And that was one of the places that was identified right off. <clears throat> um, a lot of different discussions about what was going on there. We had actually, the town had actually entered into an agreement with an organization to put assisted living apartments there. I believe the 24 apartments were planned to be built there, uh, but they didn't get their funding, and uh, that fell through. Is <clears throat> It sat there for a while longer, and that's when Envision Borough got incorporated and, and started looking, and that piece was still looked at for different uses. Um, Eventually, the town voted to put the fire station on that property. And during that process, um, as we recognized that there was a piece, that piece out behind there was going to be vacant. And at the time, it was, um, <clears throat> I think, Mike, you were on the board at that time. Mm -hmm. It was uh, quite, quite, a, quite a series of uh, meetings we had mm -hmm. discussing what was to go there. <laughs> um, some of the things that were discussed on going there was a skateboard park. Uh, a dog park, uh, music festival area, things like that, um, which I argued at the time we were putting the station up that we should wait a few years and decide mm -hmm. after we saw what was happening there and how things were working before we decided what to do with that space. Um, 
<clears throat> I had originally proposed we put solar panels there, but that was shot down. As, uh, but um, when <coughs> Amrita decided that you know she'd like to start community gardens, that was one of the first places I looked at and, and decided to, to you know investigate that piece. Um, I think it works well. As uh, as you can see from what I just said, that the town has always intended to use that piece of property for something, and. Uh, as I said, the community garden seems like the least intrusive use that we can put there to not affect the police and fire station and their business that goes on. We did have a meeting with uh, the police chief and uh, uh, Kali from the fire department. Um, they raised a bunch of issues that I know that Dennis and Ann Reeder are working through, and hopefully we can get this all straightened out. So I believe your hearing is on January 4th is when it's scheduled, is, uh, and I'll be back at that time. So, thank you. Thank you, Don. Thank you. <coughs> As a follow-up to that, Irish, is it on our, uh, just on our plans to, to ensure that the police chief is available for that public hearing? Because I know he brought up some concerns, and I just want to make sure we are able to, he, he put them in the letter, but I would like the opportunity for him to speak to his concerns before the board so we can address those. I can send him a specific an email specifically inviting him and requesting that he attend. I, I think there'd be a lot of value. Guarantee. He brought up some valid concerns from a law enforcement perspective and I and I think we do have to if we could find compromise and, and address those concerns, I, I think we owe it to him as, as a public servant of our town to do that for him. I will I will do that but um, if you don't mind, what I'd like to do is also include um, Chief Plant on that. Give them both the opportunity Absolutely. to come here and speak. I Absolutely. don't want to just yep. single one half of the, the lot out and leave the other out. Yep. So I'll send them both a, an email requesting that they come speak and awesome. address the board. Thank you. No problem. <clears throat> okay. Um, next is approval of minutes. Oh, are we still in public comment? Oh, you, yeah, if you, you want to. Jeremy, if it's about what you and I have been emailing about, you need to, okay, okay. I was going to say, that needs to wait until they're back here. Yeah, okay. of course. Oh, you did. Just making yeah. sure. Well, I was wondering why it was, it was blank there. <laughs> <laughs> it says approval of minutes. There's just nothing, no minutes. Right, I took the, okay. the date off. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I'm, uh, hmm running on battery. I'm going to read you guys a couple things. So if, if this dies while I'm reading to you, I'll <laughs> plug it in. Uh, I wanted to start before I even... The, what, so you know why I'm here. We've talked, you, you, you folks have talked about getting public input, and I think traditionally uh, before uh, even I think James was involved, or chairing Envision, Envision's done a lot of um, this sort of thing. Talking about the town and planning and, and mm -hmm communication with with you know citizens in the town so we we had already had a subcommittee formed thinking about this stuff and so there's thoughts I'll share but uh, in the next week I know we have another week right to, to it's till the 15th to, mm -hmm. to get stuff in so we'll, we'll produce a document and James has been working with us on some of this as well so but before I even get into that I just want to say to all of you that the last meeting at Three and a half hours, like the extraordinary effort, where's the camera, for all, everybody here to be a volunteer and put in that time. It's just, I was, um, I was in Vermont when that happened, in Burlington, that's why I wasn't here, and I listened to that meeting in the car from Burlington, Vermont to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and just made it. So... It's extraordinary. The and, fact and that you the, didn't fall asleep. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> it was riveting, man. And it was um, cut, and we ran out of recording time yeah. on it. Too. Yes. It went longer than... <laughs> I, I want to just interrupt for briefly. Yeah. The, the deadline of December 15th, that's not like do or die for everything. That is just for consideration for this next round of updates, but people can continue to sure, send things in. Sure, of course, but we're, we're looking at the June well, vote. And, just you know. in case... A, People are still listening at home. Sure. I don't want them to think if they don't get them in here in time. Yeah, it's so. rolling submissions, obviously. Exactly. But we're still mm -hmm. trying to, you know. Just clarifying. There's two two votes a year. Yep. Mysteriously, they change every year, I hear. But yeah, <laughs> there are two votes a year, so we're trying to make the next one. Um, so I just wanted to say, 
regardless of wh- where we all fall in our opinions about life and our town and everything, the dedication and the, the, the everybody's heart is in the right place, and that's clear. And so just worth mentioning, three and a half hours, man. That's <laughs> incredible. So I wanted to read you a couple things that, that we would love to um, look at putting in the mix uh, coming up. And obviously this is something that, that you know, our subcommittee that is at the moment sort of called sustainability, but also maybe something else because it's nobody loves the name. And Envision Borough give uh, different sets of ideas, plus stuff we're working with James on. I've also been in touch with, with Lee Jay, who gave me uh, a fabulous connection with um, the planner in Auburn, who's and they've done some fabulous stuff. So, so I'm trying to put what I can together for next week, and then you know some of it will will be rolling. Um, one of the things we've talked about is a larger lot size in general. Uh, we would like to make ours at least equal to our surrounding towns. R three at the moment is. Uh, 90,000 square feet, North Berwick's equivalent, the Farm and Forest. It's 160,000 square feet, and South Berwick, R4, R5, is 120,000 square feet. So be nice to kind of set us up with even footing, um, making Berwick less desirable to developers in that way so that we're not the town that's sitting here with, you know, as a sitting duck <laughs> with our neighboring towns you know, situated differently and maintain some of our uh, more rural character. Um, we would like to enact, look at enacting a growth ordinance that restricts the number of new residential building permits issued per year, restricting the number of homes built in the individual development to three per year, limit the number of new developments started per year, and set a percentage of permits aside <coughs> each year so that developers can't grab them all and uh, they're made available to individuals who are building outside of development. Uh, again, I'm, you don't have to write everything down. I'll get it to you. But make the permits expire after a certain number of days so that developers can't just come in, grab them all up at the start of the year, as used to happen. Um, the idea is to slow development and allow the town time to adjust, grow in a slow and steady manner. It gives the town and school system the ability to make changes more gradually. Also allows time to see and mitigate the potential impacts to our infrastructure, water, sewer, environment, etc. Um, we would love to look at a right to farm law to protect both current and future agriculture in the town, protecting farms and farmers, and alerting people moving in that they're moving into a rural community and there are some less than pleasant aspects of agriculture that they will have to learn to live with, as we all do. Uh, when we protect prime farmland as part of developments or subdivisions, it has to be maintained, we hope, as a single accessible piece, not broken up into little pieces that farmers would not have access to. Also put a requirement in, we hope, that the development slash subdivisions are responsible for maintaining that land in the current state. Field must be maintained as a field to keep it available and open for agriculture. That's uh, from Envision Berwick. This is from our, our um, subcommittee, open, uh, whatever we're at the moment called sustainability, but it's sort of agriculture, open space, rural protection subcommittee. Um, we're looking at asking to increase development fees higher in certain zones and lower in others. Right now they're the same across the board. Increase density in some areas protect prime land by making minimum lot sizes much larger, as we talked about. So not paying for infrastructure in areas that could be preserved and not developed. Apply impact fees to areas with prime farmland that goes to acquisition of farmland of statewide <coughs> significance. This is something that, that we've talked a lot about with James that I think um, he'll be helping articulate. But uh, a transfer of development rights. Do you all understand how that would work? It's uh, you, you sell the, your development rights in a rural area and send them to higher density areas, much like a conservation easement. Uh, for example, an owner in R3 sells development rights to someone in R2 or R1. The owner of R3 does not develop the land. I mean, there's a lot of complicated stuff around this, but these are all good things to start keeping an eye on and thinking about in terms of, um, you know, comprehensive plan, following the surveys, what the citizens are asking for, basically. Recognizing the difference between families and developers, 
creating a tiered system that has tighter regulation for larger cumulative landowners. The different rules and incentives minimize the impact of development on the town. Um, adjust zoning between railroad tracks and zoning transition on Route 4. Commercial and industrial lots could and should be developed in a way that creates wildlife corridors, if possible. That's something we'd love to have. And we talked about that in our group meeting the other night. Um, that's my laptop dying. The rest is stuff that we have started to articulate with James, so I will work with him to prepare a document that includes everything I just blew through very quickly, as well as um, more specific stuff that's actually um, deals with what's what, what we already have and how we would like to look at adjusting it so it's not just sort of fire hosing ideas, but placing them within the ordinance. Thank you. I appreciate your time, and uh, I appreciate everything you all do. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Jeremy. Thanks, Chairman. All right, so no approval of the minutes. So we're moving to old business, integrity, construction, conditional use, 500 Portland Street, R72, lot 17, zone RCI. That's how I felt about yours. Singer. Wow. <laughs> All right. Mr. Chair, I will be recusing myself from this discussion. Okay. Thank you. I'm assuming there were no issues on the site walk. No issues with the building. Um, no, I think that one of the issues that was pointed out to us by uh, by code was that the building currently does not have a certificate of occupancy, so it cannot be occupied. Yeah, and I would argue we're not occupying the building at this time. But I, I think for us to approve, doesn't it have to have... A certificate of occupancy or well that would be a condition or of approval. a condition yeah. of approval yeah okay I'm comfortable with that being a condition of approval okay so we're looking for a motion to find that application complete with conditions is that I thought we found it complete last time mm -hmm. we? we are approving with conditions right? yeah I think approved with conditions yeah yeah now, is that the only condition we want to condition as the CEO? That's all that I found. Uh, it seemed to... It, do we have the... <coughs> from the site, well, you mentioned about the fire alarm system being put in. That'll be part of, Everything, this, of um, the occupancy, right? So they have, uh, they have to comply with the state electrical inspector, which Brian will send me something from that. Um, the uh, chief plant and I had walked through and met with the owner and the applicant. They know what they need to do for all the things for fire. And then once I have those two things, and obviously his dust collector needs to be finished collecting, uh, hooked together. Once all of that's done, then I can go through and issue the actual certificate of occupancy, but they won't get that until those items are tended to. Those are all tied into the CO. You don't have to spell it all out. Then. Nope. Yeah. You don't have to sell it. If you put it CO, then it, it all lands in my lap, and they have to put all the pieces together just like any other commercial business would. Okay. Makes it easy for us, then. Yes. We try to make it easy for that's the board to... That's why to, I was asking. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so I just wanted to make sure. I'll make a motion to approve uh, this application. Conditional use. Uh, conditional use application for uh, for this property at 500 Portland uh, pending certificate of occupancy and code finding them up to date so uh, yeah I think that's it Can I, I just ask you a question on that before you mm -hmm. so uh, do we have to put that as a condition certificate of occupancy I mean that's pretty standard procedure isn't it that you get approved for use then you get a certificate of occupancy? I think the board is doing it. I think the board does it as a uh, kind of a clarification because I think most of the places that come through here that are conditional use are already constructed or 
They already have the CEO. They already I mean, have a CEO you know, of some kind. It's kind of semantics, kind. but it just seems like a, you know, if you, you we approve a subdivision, right, and they don't build until they get a building permit, but we don't make it a condition of the approval to get a building permit. But the, the uh, difference with that is that a building permit is not already issued and required to be closed out the, when you do a subdivision. With a subdivision, they're approving the concept of the use of the land, which then means you have to comply with all the building permits. That what we're doing For now? this particular issue, this is just approving the use of the building in a building that is unlike most of the others that have come before this board in my time here. Um, actually, I think this is the only one that hasn't had a CO as of yet. So I right. think it's the intent of the board to just clarify that while the use may be an approved use, that it can't actually be used until the CO is issued. Okay. Am I correct in that, Mr. Chair? Yeah. I will second your motion. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. okay. Thank you. Moving I on. had a half a second thought where I was like, why isn't Rick voting yes? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. okay. All right. Because Rick wants to get fired. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So new business. Rick is now coming back. On. Uh, approval and adoption of site walk protocol. I, I'm going to make a motion that we approve, but I, I would like to make a comment. Uh, two comments, actually. I, I think this has always been very clear to us all. And I think the nexus of this was our site walk for the gas station, which I found to be very peculiar that we had it being recorded and televised. It, we've never done that on a site walk previously. So I just, that, that was peculiar. And I, I will speak to that. Okay, may I finish? Yes. The other issue was there was a gentleman who wasn't a butter. Um, he was obviously having a hard time uh, with mobility and he was not able to walk the property. So I did depart from the group to go meet that gentleman on his property line and ensure that he did receive an abutters notice and he knew why we were there. And that was the extent of my conversation. So I, I do, I, I understand this, and I just want to make sure that my actions were not misconstrued in any way. But I do believe as a board, it, it is incumbent upon us to, uh, I know we can't discuss the particulars of the project, but to be welcoming and serve the people we have sworn to serve. And that, that was the purpose of my outreach to that gentleman. So if somebody misconstrued my actions, I'm, I'm a big boy, come talk to me. Um, I don't think this is necessary, but I will vote to make a motion that we accept this. Two, two, well, actually, I can kind of say three things, two things. So first, to why it was recorded and televised, um, that was a choice by BCM for because with this project having been such obviously it's a very um, emotionally charged is a, is a good way I think to put it kind of thing that's before the town um, it was a choice by BCM to attend record it televise it because with in light of the weather obviously as you saw was that their turnout. choice or were they directed to record as no, far as I know, it was their check. choice. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. They would have to speak to that. She just they, it's just peculiar that that has not, never happened with another project in, in my time. Um, so it just seemed very peculiar. That's I can all. tell it's you that project. it's, yeah, it's not a typical project. Mm -hmm. It's not a typical thing. But I can tell you that I have seen videos of site walks on the BCM channel. So it appears they have done this a few times. Okay. Um, second, uh, I was there at the site walk. I never saw you go talk to the neighbor. Terry was not there at the site walk. Terry is the one that wrote this up. So there would be no um, reason to think it was you. That genuinely was because a former, a former planning board member, Nicole mm -hmm. Facto, came in and said something to us about how um, she was under. She had been aware that we were not necessarily doing things properly, the the optimal way and the way we should at site walks. So. Okay. I guess it's Harry just a coincidence, but I, I certainly wanted to address my actions if, if it was Appreciate my actions. Appreciate the transparency, but it Absolutely. certainly was actually in works, uh, what, probably about three weeks before, I think, because okay. she brought us to, cookies. Yeah, it also helps to understand <laughs> that um, it makes sense to keep the group together so that we're all hearing the questions and that the questions are directed to one person. Mm -hmm. 
I need this document myself because I, I broke half of these protocols myself I was, this evening. <laughs> I was going to say myself, I, I'm quite guilty of wandering off and, and talking with groups. So and, and we did. So just to just to clarify, yeah. so is, our is answer, it within is it within the scope of a board member, right? If if we see somebody who clearly has a physical impediment that precludes them from being able to go on the site walk, is it appropriate just to assert and say, did you get your abutters notice and are you aware of the public hearing? I think is that's that, a question that, for either Mike or Hannah to answer. I just want to make sure that's appropriate because I feel like it's our it's our job to be available to the public. Is Maybe it not? it's more appropriate if, if uh, Irish or I do that. Okay. You not stay a, with the board. Mike. Or, <clears throat> I'd ask Hannah on that. Okay. I think Hannah, do you want to weigh in on that one? Um, I would say it's probably most appropriate for the chair to do that. Um, yeah, or know. if another board member were to just say, hey, Mike, I'm, I just spoke with this gentleman or whatever, but make sure the chair knows at the time that it's happening if he isn't the one to do it. Okay. I appreciate the clarification. No, we all get spanked at the same time with this one, Phil. You're not uh, alone. I <laughs> can handle it. <laughs> I, I wander <laughs> off, too. So when I was reading it, I was like, mm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Guilty. Just, uh, just as a general comment on this, uh, the, uh, after going through X number of site walks over the years, uh, people always are walking up to you giving their opinion of this and that and the other thing. And my canned response to all of them is, we're just here to look. Mm -hmm. The public hearing is a place to talk. Mm -hmm. And in the intervening time, if you have issues that you want addressed, send an email to planning mm -hmm. and uh, so that it can be brought up. But we can't do it here. So that's kind of the canned pitch that I give everybody that's, uh, so that that's we can't good. discuss it there. Yeah, I like that, Paul, because, yes. you know, I can see myself getting getting caught in those rabbit holes where, yeah. you know, you want to be friendly and open and, you know, you're a member of the community. So you want, you know, you don't want to be like, I can't talk to you, but, you know. And the thing is, too, this yeah. is <laughs> this <laughs> document is also going to help guide future planning board mm -hmm. members that may, as people may come on and off of the board. So it's. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's stuff here that I, I may not have even thought about. Exactly, uh, and, and I, I didn't. And, and urging the public to save their comments uh, for the public hearing makes ensures that everybody hears it because mm -hmm. because it's televised. So yeah. I would um, I would like to add that if we it, this is like the epitome of a gray area on a sidewalk. We we're supposed to follow these rules. We all break the rules, but we're asking to set rules, and and that's fine. But I think. The public also needs to be informed what's okay and what's not okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if a very short blurb is given to the chair and mm -hmm. said at the beginning of every site walk, mm -hmm. this is why we're here, this is what's mm -hmm. okay, this is what's not okay. It it's might take away good. some of those needing to tell them, yeah. you know, to send an email or whatever, just so that we're consistent mm -hmm. in setting our rules so that we follow them better and then hoping that the public will follow. We set the right expectations. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just a quick a good little, idea. Yep. When you Summary. when you start the site walk, yeah. you know. Okay. Because you, I know you don't have enough to. And do I'll print him. I'll <laughs> print him a little. Yeah. I'll print him a little card. Yeah. 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 What the expectations are of everybody right. there? What yeah. we're doing there? What the public's doing there? Yep. Really when they can. Yeah. Yeah. Totally agree. I like it. You send out a butter's notices, right? Yes. That should go in that, so they know. Yeah. As well, I think well. in addition. Yeah. Right. Sometimes they get in a butter's notice and they read the first paragraph about what's it about, and then yeah. they just forget well, the sometimes rest. Sometimes they're like, not even butters. Right. right. Exactly. Right. But at least they've been told. So. I agree. Yeah. 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 We could also add it to the butter's notice with a line like, "If you" in bold letters, <laughs> "If you plan to attend, please read." Mm -hmm. and have that communication would be easier yep. and they'll make the right? site walks a lot faster which yes. no offense to any of y'all because I love hanging out with y'all but um, we freeze we just want to get in and out get out of there I hate to say this but you could take it one step further on the abutters notice you, you have like a section if you have comments or stuff put it on this and mail it in or whatever hmm. after the site walk 
to make sure that they get answered. You give them a place to put their thoughts down mm -hmm. instead of verbalizing it. We do that in a lot of what I do. We if give I can the get it all on one page, more than willing to do that, it's not I'm a bad saying. idea. Yeah, I'm just saying. It works out good because what I do, we do the same thing when we do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she had a cat attack. <laughs> Hannah's entertaining us. I want to see the kitty's face, though. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I'll but see anyway, if I can tweet I mean, those. That's yeah. all great suggestions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, based on that, I would make a motion that we approve the protocol and adopt it. I will second. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Next is land use ordinance amendments. Oh God! I didn't even think about this. I, I would like to say thanks for your efforts for getting the public engagement going and uh, getting this stuff back in from the public. Is one, it makes our job easier. Two, um, it, it's, it's what we're supposed to be doing. So yeah, I, I like that. Um, one piece that I have a concern, and I, I think the last time we went through this, there are certain left end, right end limits of what we can do with the land use ordinance. So before we digest each of these one for one, would it be appropriate for either the attorney or for James or somebody who's better versed in what is and is not allowed to help us digest these so we're not wasting, and I, I don't want to use the term wasting time, but expending effort on something that is not within the realm of possibility. Spending effort on something that belongs to somebody else's wheelhouse. Yeah, yes. Correct. Yeah, because um, some things were just or, or that were their statements. Mm -hmm. Part of it, part of what is, I think, um, and surprise Terry, surprise James, if you're listening, part of what I want to do is I want to take all of these comments. Um, we've set the deadline for the 14th for this go around of, you know, for anything that's going to be considered for this next election. Um, anything we receive after that will be considered, but for a different time. And that gives us time to put all this stuff together and, like, group it. Because there are a lot of things, like all these uh, with, like, an extra light, sidewalk kind of things. Those are more of a public works thing. <laughs> However, I've, re I've refrained from making any sort of comment like that because, quite frankly, I'd rather be doing the weeding out of the comments and directing what needs to to public works or or what have you, or like the 236 stuff, if it's on the wrong side of 236 to the state, and at least get that input from the residents. But you're right, we need to have we need to have this be stuff that you, you know, are and able adjust. to work are on. Are able to adjust. I picked up on the same thing. There was yeah. a fair amount of things that just, just are not in our purview. Not in our wheel. So, so would you guys like to put these on hold? For right now, instead of having we your clean coffee, it instead of having your coughing uh, code officer read all these <laughs> into yeah. yes, I would. But also, uh, just to further clarify, that uh, we had had a couple of months ago, uh, prior to the uh, uh, the last election, we had had uh, a joint meeting. Mm -hmm. with the select board and at least on one issue in particular mm -hmm. which is now in front of us um, we had all decided here together as a group select and planning what we said would be the criteria for that um, after which it went to select to get put on the ballot and got changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I I'm just wondering what's our job here I mean, uh, why do we go through that when so, uh, when it's going to get changed anyway? Because I thought we had agreement on a few things that just did not translate onto the ballot. So they did get changed during the select meeting. And if that's their purview, fine. But why are we doing this? Well, I, I think that I think that our job is to make a recommendation to the select board, and the select board and the town attorney tweaks it and tunes it. And puts it on the ballot so yeah, this I, wasn't tweaked this <laughs> completely changed this yeah. was changed substantially so I, I think so that one thing that I would say though in a little bit off of that but in reference to tabling this you know this this is stuff people did what we asked them to do and put this before us 
and to table this whole document until the next meeting puts it out of the deadline. Well, I think no, no, I, I mean, no, it's not going to be. They got until mm -hmm. December 14th to submit them to to us. It's, I'm talking okay. about tabling them, reading them into record, and we can get them all, because this isn't all of them. These are just what you've received since last meeting. So we're compiling them, like, all of them okay. together. Okay, I just, I just, because no. what we have, actually putting the effort in to put them in front of us. So I want to, I want to deal with them. Oh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's right. yeah. Okay. The, the so, one thing but I wanted... the thing is, the thing is, is that the deadline is for them to send them in, so that you guys can then start working on yeah. what uh, incorporating them into the actual verbiage of the ordinance. You got to pick which pieces of the pie out of this, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You're going to be working on what you feel is something that you can make recommendations for, something the board itself is in agreement on making changes that you guys can discuss whether you're going to, to handle it or not. So what I'm suggesting is absolutely not like tabling it until it's out of, out of question, but they still have time to submit further um, things. But we stopped the submittal. Okay. So we stopped we the submittal them. on the 13th for this, to, for this particular cutoff just so that we would have time to put everything together, get it to you guys, and you guys would have time to digest all the information, and you each can pick out what you feel is important out of this to, to hit for. And I'm glad you brought it up and asked questions because we don't want you just looking at it and saying, yep, want to deal with this now, yep, want to deal with this now. Everything else just goes in the round file. You know, you, can, you guys can are fully capable of saying, all right, you know what, we think we've got a whole ton of good suggestions here. We're going to tackle these six things, and we're going to put these th six things off, and they'll end up on the next, um, potentially the next ballot after this one. It's just to get this, <coughs> this LUO update stuff is going to be on every agenda from here until we're gone and somebody else says we're not doing this no more, you know. Um, What's the deadline for getting things on the uh, ballot for June? For anything that's submitted to us right now, uh, they have to get it to us for you guys to review by the. the no, I mean so for us, the board, um, to get it on the ballot. When well, no, February. no when, when February. Yeah. It, let's work backwards. We have a vote in June. The things that are on that yeah, ballot. Yeah, we have a. We have a. Do you want to? Is go it like on? February, April? Uh, the What's the paper? The paper that yeah, Patty, Patty. Patty has a. a a sheet How many that months has, before? Yes. It has I want to say it's either late February or early exactly. April so it could be or three, March. could be three months prior. Yep. Yep. Because okay. it has to go to the town so attorney. It has bit of to go to the to select work through these things yeah. mm -hmm. until the selectmen make their final. We have about four or five meetings. Okay. So here's, yeah. here's what's going to happen at this exact moment. Terry is running next door because she, when Patty gave us all the deadlines, we requested all the deadlines. And Patty and Terry worked it backwards, like mm -hmm. you said. Um, now she had it hung on the wall. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping she still does. Can't oh, guarantee Hannah, that. Hannah's good. Something but she's going to check it. Hannah? It's February 15th. February 15th. Is when it's got to go to the select board? No. Um, that, that's it says February 15th, 2024, paperwork of proposed ordinance changes due to town manager from boards, committees, and department heads. February 20th, pre presentation to Board of Selectmen uh, by boards, committees, and department heads. February 20th, public discussion at Selectmen meeting, and then so on. So we have three meetings. So would it be reasonable, at, as a, so we come out of this meeting with an action that, that we're going to hold ourselves accountable to? I, I read through these and recommendations, I the and I, I, I think they're great. What I what I don't want to get into is the quandary we got into last time, where we're like, yeah, this is a good idea, and we're told that that's not in our wheelhouse. Um, case in point, you know, a lot of the stuff that was brought up by Envision Berwick um, and their input with regard to larger lot sizes, uh, restricting building permits, and the limit of number of permits issued to control growth. Um, I'd be a huge advocate of that. I, I think it's a good idea. Um, is that within our purview and is it legal and that those are the questions that I have because otherwise if it's not legal and it's not within our purview then we're just spinning our wheels no. I and I just want to make all sure of, all of those things are in the purview of the planning board. they are yep. they okay are. they are also being worked on by other um, departments and other um, 
committees and James is working with those committees to try and you know and I was told today the comprehensive plan is appearing appears to be on track for vote for 2020 June 2025 election mm -hmm. so and that's part June of why 2025 yes. 2025 because they're working through the um, actually I think they're pretty much hitting the growth um, section of that and there is some as you said there's some some concerns about what may or may not be legal for the town to do and we certainly don't want to trample anybody's uh, legal rights because that's absolutely the exact opposite of what we want to do um, yeah, I, think, I think that's what one one person submitted a uh, an email yeah basically saying that that you know when when you do things like that you know you devalue somebody's property right and, yeah and Mr. for me for me my thing about you know the the comments from Envision Borough if we can talk about that now and limiting you know building permits I've seen that done in towns and it's not very successful and it, you know stifles growth in a town and if if somebody said you know this town is growing so fast that we're overburdening the fire department we're overburdening the school system okay I could see that but all indications that I've seen so far is that none of that is happening we're not putting a burden on the on the sewer district, not putting a burden on the schools, on the fire department, on the police department. So why would we? You left out one key one though, and it's the water department. And we we've had those discussions, and I think that's a, a big one that we we do have to. We can't bury our head in the sand when it comes to uh, basic needs and and being able to support growth. And and I'm not averse to the growth, but when we went, how many months were you know, basic human necessity, potable water was not available to our our well, residents. I, I think that's, that, that was that's two huge. separate issues, right? The, right? the issue of that there was some malfunctions and some things going mm -hmm. on at the water department that was not uh, correct, right? Mm -hmm. that, you mm -hmm. know, somebody dropped the ball or something something happened there. But that doesn't mean that we're burdening <coughs> on the water supply at the current rate of growth. And I, I being a developer that's one of the things that we have to look at every project mm -hmm. and you know we have to talk to the water department and everything that I've seen to date is that you know we're at very low capacity I mean very low usage of mm -hmm. our overall capacity the sewer district has said multiple times that they have a whole nother station they haven't mm -hmm. even fired up right. yet yeah so I, I just think that that you know having that information <coughs> in front of us to look at to make those decisions makes right. more sense to me than just going on a, a feeling or correct. We've asked right. for that over the past year, and we have not it, so gotten it in writing. There's been some emails back and forth, like, "Oh yeah, they said this," but yeah, I like, think like what we're the water tower is holds a, a million gallons, right. yeah. and it doesn't even get low pressure until it's used over six hundred thousand gallons. And that's but where is that? Where is that in writing for us to be able to remember? Make yeah, we use about 300,000 a year. So, with, with no disrespect to anybody intended, I don't, and I say that in case anybody from Maine Water is watching, um, the Water District, I think Maine Water has put in writing about as committal as they're going to, which is we have ample capacity. And they want to, they like the sewer department. They have ample capacity, and that's all they're going to say. They're not going to estimate how much, and I think that has to do with their ever-changing systems. But that's why each project, as it comes forward, is has to show that they have consulted Maine Water and the sewer department if required, mm -hmm. because they have to be able to show that and that. But if they're getting the same standard canned answer of, sure, we have capacity, and I'm not, I'm not poking at anybody but what I'm saying is if we can't get it's just planning that's what we're charged to do to do and if we don't know what I, that capacity is and we're getting that's it, when we get out of the scope of the planning board yeah, yeah. All, all it's all uh, compart compartmentalized mm -hmm. and when water says it's okay that's all the planning board's looking for. It's just like with the fire. It's just like with the police. May I play devil's advocate here? Yep. Part of the problem, I think, with that, Mr. Vice Chair, is the fact that they might be able to say, okay, you know what, we can handle, let's just for ease, ease of use, we can handle another 1,000 households mm -hmm. 
how many bedroom households? How many of them can go to planning? How many of them can be ADUs that Irish can permit? That all these things that are without outside of the planning board's purview and scope to even review. They can't really give you guys a number of units that you can give because it varies based on bedroom size, mm -hmm. basis businesses. Every business has a different use capacity. So, so is it beyond is it beyond the scope of a reasonable ask that we have some type of a planning matrix where I mean there was there was a period in time that we were not able to deliver clean water to the people we serve. So I think that's, yeah, that's beyond drought, the board. Drought times. I right. think that's beyond the board's ability to request mm -hmm. because what you would be doing is asking an you know an organization to try and answer to a, a slew of unknown variables. So it's an before. ambiguous number that we live to. Is, no, is it's a, it's an ever changing number that you live to because when so everything that's come between. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick on Les here. So Les came before you with Norman Court. He had to go to the water district and say. All right, water, sewer, this is what I want to do. Can you handle it? And they had to tell him yes or no. Well, in between then and now, the number of things that I've approved that have gone on, you know, that changes things. So it, the, the number they were utilizing, the, all their numbers they were working with when Les was there for Norman Court, not the same as what Terry's going to be here for, you know, Berwick Acres for next week. It's just not going to, it's always going to change. So they can't actually give you anything that's going to make sense in the long run for you to actually work off of, I don't think. I think what we're all trying to say, in one way or another, I know from my standpoint, when they say, okay, yeah, we can support this project, okay, how many of those projects can we support before the town infrastructure has to be changed and additional right. funding? That, that's, well, that goes that's through the board of selectmen. That, yeah. that goes through the board of selectmen. Right. Yes. All those and issues, because they do have an annual report that the water district has to, the same with sewer, they yeah. all go through the selectmen and they have these reports. And so. I understand that you're asking that, Jerry, but the answer remains the same. They can't mm -hmm. tell you you can do X many projects because how many bedrooms, how many washer machines, how many, you they know, just go by how many usage. businesses are going to be there? Those those the the with all due respect, too too there, an there is statistical analysis. Right. That there is not a mystery. Well, it's not pie in the sky. It's, you know, it's, it's empirical data. And that can be used based on historical and current usage. So it isn't, oh, gee, I don't know. It looks like it's okay. Uh, we really, uh, somebody has got to do those, and maybe they do. They do that they just when don't each share project, it. they do that when each project is brought before them. They mm -hmm. factor so, that So when the end. next project is brought before them, do they then say, okay, here's the ones we've approved already, and that's, you know, what we're expecting to come online within the next 18 to 24 months, and therefore this is added to that. Do they do that? I mean, I, I would love to know how they how they so do their math. I, I have I don't work a there. thought. <laughs> <And> with, for, <laughs> from my know. standpoint, I mean, I love data. I love numbers. Knowledge and information is critical. Um, and and looking for a specific household number, bedroom number, gallons per minute number, capacity number, is going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. yes, but what, what I would doing. like to see, per, perhaps, is more of a percentage number. Mm -hmm. We are at only twenty percent. Of our our capacity exactly. to run a water in this town. We've been asking for that for about a year. Yeah. So so more <laughs> so. of a just percentage guess. Right. I, I don't think we can get down to the gallon, but I think that we can get like we're like we don't even have another station open. We have a whole other station we can do. So we're not even at fifty percent capacity. Mm -hmm. Some kind of knowledge like that I think would make me feel better to know that we're not even close to running dry in the well. I, I think that that information has been provided. Yeah, but yeah it's not about thirty percent. The water. The, yeah, the water. The water. They the, say we're about thirty percent. The sewer is not even out. close to oh, fifty percent. I, I think. I wonder. My question would be. I wonder if it's part of the comprehensive plan. If we said, you know, look, historically over the last ten years, we have grown at a rate of six percent, and if we continue on that trajectory, in fifteen years, we're going to need a bigger water supply. Or right bigger sewer district, right? You know, th that would be, if, if, if it's possible to attain something like that, would be ideal because the, the thought of, you know, 
uh, stifling growth for no reason. Well, even with the last joint meeting that we had when Les and I and Don was there, um, the growth projected in the 90s, we were supposed to be over 10,000 residents. Right, that was Tom, Tom yeah. I think Tom was talking about that, yeah. right? And we're at 8,600. And, that, and that's, why I, that's why I thought the thing, you know, when he was saying that, I'm like, you know, all the data that I've seen, all the growth stuff up on the wall there, indicates that we're not even growing at any accelerated rate. It seems like we're exploding on the scene. I mean, it seems like we got developments going on everywhere, but the data says different. You know, the data says how many students are in school. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so the, the, our perception, because, because we see every project, right, mm -hmm. the perception of somebody because a development gets built in their backyard is that, you know, we're, we're exploding. And the data just doesn't support that. So Well, and there's a lot of cluster divisions, too, so you see all the houses right up against the road. Right. You know, so it looks like the town's got a billion houses, but you go up in a plane and you look down, it's all forest. Yep, mm -hmm. it's all green. Yep. And, and I, I'll, I'll also mention that, you know, years ago, I don't remember the exact date, but maybe 2005, when I built my house in North Berwick, North Berwick had a moratorium on building permits, and they limited the number of building permits. And Berwick said, you know what, we're going to lift the moratorium. Build whatever you want for houses. And in North Berwick, when I got my building permit, there was literally a lottery system. You went in there, there were... I don't remember the exact number, but 36 of us, and there were 33 permits issued that year. And everybody, you know, called the number, you got a permit, or you didn't. Mm -hmm. And to what end? You know, in Berwick, they lifted the moratorium. I lived in North Berwick then, and it didn't collapse the town. So I, I'd need to see, a, you know, a reason beyond it seems like we're growing too fast for me to be in favor of any type of limiting growth. What and if, if you if somebody presented that to me and said, I, I think then I, where I a favorite. lot of issue is is they want to limit outside growth. They want to limit growth in the R three zones and more residential areas and try to promote the growth downtown. The thing is, like you said before in recent meetings, is the density needs mm -hmm. to change. You know, if we if we want the people to congregate towards downtown, we need to make it so more people can live downtown. Mm -hmm. Hence, like, we're building the edge, but even, like, when it comes down to apartment buildings around here, like, mm -hmm. the apartment buildings should be able to be bigger on a lot in downtown. So that way we can fit more people downtown. Right. Yeah, and, and I'm going to submit something before the 14th. Um, basically, <coughs> I'm going to take the excerpt from North Berwick's land use ordinance where they have overlay districts, mm -hmm. which changes the density from, I don't know, 10,000 square feet on public water and sewer to 2,500 square feet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on a, on a half acre lot, you could theoretically get eight units. Mm -hmm. And if you think about an eight unit apartment building, it's not that big of a footprint, right. really, with parking, right. you know? Yep. So, so something like that may make sense for us, and that's going to be my proposal. The other thing I would say about, you know, when he was talking about R3, I get that, right? Like, you know, a, a town, in my, the way I look at it, is a town is planned like a wagon wheel, right? So you look at the hub, look at how closely populated those spokes are. And as you get out, right, they're, they're more sparsely populated and more area. We already have pretty stringent regulations in R3 and in R2 without uh, town water and sewer, right? What is mm -hmm. it, three building permits per year yep. in a subdivision? So, yes. so, you know, we already have tight regulations to slow that growth in those areas. And that's why we don't see a lot of subdivisions in R3 because from a developer standpoint, it doesn't make sense to, you know, spend four or $500,000 mm -hmm. for a piece of land and hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a little bit of road in to sell mm -hmm. three houses. <coughs> so th I, I think that's already in play. Um, but yeah, again, to, to really for me to be on board with limiting any kind of growth, I'd have to see data that suggests that would be healthy for the town or, or the growth rate we're at is unhealthy. May I, may I for a minute just circle back around? I was just going to comment about that graph right there. You that's can do that real quick, but just okay. because I want to make sure that... Yep. Mr. Roy knows that he was heard. 
I will email James and the sewer department see if I can at least get a percentage of capacity. I think that's a. a I don't know if they'll give us anything. Mm -hmm. I make yeah. no promises and no putting my head on the chopping block. No, and we're not asking anybody to do that. But I think what we have asked for in the past is the percentage, mm -hmm. where we're at on that percentage. But also, and, and I think it's important that, you know, the sewage department has gone on the record mm -hmm. formally and said, we're good. Mm -hmm. The water department, not so much. And, I, and I, I'm not trying to hold anybody's feet to the fire, but our feet are being held to the fire for, you know, reasonable development we, we did have a water issue and and regardless of what caused that we, we can't bury our heads in the sand about that <laughs> issue and I don't think it's unreasonable to ask them what is your current capacity what is your future capacity I'll and what's your again. what is your demand signal going to be for you to say we, we need to expand or we need to stop it, we're not gonna have enough water I, I just that's the responsible thing for us to do as a, as a board I will email again right and see what I can do. Okay. I think I think I one of the that. one of the things to consider with that conversation <clears throat> is also that you know uh, what percentage of the developments come in here that are not on the town water Correct. supply. Correct. Like yeah. It's majority of R two and R three. Almost all of R three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Private water, water and right. sewer. Uh, yeah. Private, private yeah. well. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think as a way forward, if I if I may, Mr. Chair, we, we have these lists that, that were provided to us, and, and these are great, and, and it's a lot to digest. If we each digest this and come up with our top ten, and then when we come back, we compile and, and find out what our priorities are, that we were holding ourselves accountable to, to some forward momentum on this in particular. But in the interim, if we could get a chop from James or legal on what is appropriate and not appropriate for us to attack so we're not wasting our our efforts yeah. but well, I think if we could each pick our top 10 and when we can next think time we have 10 we absolutely have more than um, that well, well, I think, well the some of them are just statements are like oh yeah lighting yeah. on around yeah. Lyman Street that right. would be wonderful that's not the purview you're of gonna, the planning yeah. board no. yeah no, but you're going to you're going to see a few that right. I'm going to float through Hannah yeah. Um, yeah but so wait who am I emailing oh Phil and James okay. I had to yeah, I had to stop and think I started writing and then look at talking. the this bottom of the uh, suggestions this yep. is this is from our office you can yep. always do something like this literally yeah. Yeah. Okay. that short that brief yep. mm -hmm. you know um, I did feel like I should share people's entire emails. Absolutely. Especially oh, yes. if yeah, you no, initially, yeah. right? But yeah. now you can feel free to go through them and, and mark them up. Look, I'm the super only thing excited I want to, know to see is people yeah. engage, yeah. Oh, yeah. engage yeah. in the yeah. process. It's huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want to know if I need to read them out loud or are no, we skipping not today. right now. Not today. But okay. Do we want to, when we reconvene, <laughs> everybody prioritize what your top five or ten are? Yeah. And let's make that our focus. So. We're, we're not losing track of this and we missed the mark for the election. So to be clear, the process for us, we're going to discuss, review, figure out what we think are good quote unquote recommendations. We may or may not have another joint meeting. We will likely present something to you, the we select We will have board. another joint meeting. Okay, so yep. our recommendations, though, will be sent to the selectmen. Yeah, I, I they, go. You and, do that? Yeah. And then you, they review and discuss. Or the chair at that moment, because okay. it might be changing okay. in January. Who knows? Okay. Just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. Okay. Not saying I, I won't do it. I'd still do it. But. And then the select board will <laughs> regurgitate and discuss and figure out what then goes on the ballot. Yep. So in uh, and then it goes to the then it goes to the legal, attorney goes okay. to our town attorney so to review step. to yeah. make sure that we're not oh, violating anybody's constitutional rights. Okay. Yeah. So that's January. So I guess in the in the in the in the theme of um, transparency, what I'd like to say to to Paul's point is that there's more than one step that people can just throw an idea in. Yes, mm -hmm. we have a deadline for us to receive these things, mm -hmm. but selectman meetings are open to the public yep. and, and there's the a public information hearing should be brought that. to them yep. Yep. Uh, at any time to get it out in the, in the open and on the table of what townspeople want and think because I, I think what Paul said was important that you know we did a bunch of work and we made our recommendations and yeah they're only recommendations um, <coughs> but 
at the next step, it was out of our hands and things were just really different. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'd like people to know that even though things change as they go, they still have opportunity to voice their opinion. Mm -hmm. yep. And it wasn't us. It wasn't <laughs> us. <laughs> and it wasn't us. Our hands were clean. So do we want to make a commitment on for each of us to come back with our top five or top ten? Yeah, right. right. Can, or, or our top recommendations. Top yeah. recommendations. Yeah. And then we can... Move target to focus on those and, and mm -hmm. put out the best product we can. Yep. Uh, I would like to offer my services to the board that if any of these uh, kind of tickle your fancy and you're having a hard time finding out, figuring out for yourself what um, ordinance might, it may pertain or might need to be changed, feel free if it's okay with the, mm -hmm. the chair for you to reach out to me directly oh, yeah. rather yeah. than through him. Yep. But reach out to me and I'll help you find that ordinance so you can tweak it. Yeah, as long as four people, four community <coughs> board members don't convene at the same time. Email me directly <laughs> or come in one by one, yep. please, and thank you. Please. Okay. <laughs> but I will help you find the ordinance to which each of these mm -hmm. pertains, if you would like. Okay? Can I just ask one question in this? I know we're probably <coughs> rotating this, but um, because I'm pretty sure I know the answer. This, this uh, Dennis Jackson asked for defini definitions of steep slopes. Isn't that clearly defined in the land use ordinance? Actually, we do not appear to have a like specific actual definition in the definition section of steep slopes. Hmm. That's why he's asking for it. I did not like review. I know that there are well, I, I know it. I know he's each quoted, you know, several places that they say steep slopes, but typically <laughs> in the definitions, it would it would have given a definition. They're not going to define it in every paragraph. There no, is nothing in our definitions. It and didn't find the definition yeah. at all. Nothing in the yeah, LUO. But found no definition. There is absolutely no definition for that in the LUO. Well, there are several definitions. In my personal opinion, is that the LUO is lacking several definitions in the definition section. That sounds like an easy. I agree. That makes it yeah. user friendly. I agree. Is it, you know, because I, I just, I thought, you know, I've dealt with this in the past, steep slopes, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it, maybe it's just an engineering standard that spells that out, um, but it's interesting that it's not. It's very interesting to me as well that it's not covered in our LUO. It should have been defined because it is referred to so frequently in certain areas of because the it, it, it is important. I mean, if you have a hilly, hilly lot or property... Mm -hmm. You know, what's a steep slope? You know, yeah, well, what's steep to you might not be steep to me. Right. Right. right, right. Yep. We need a specific definition. And actually, I'm kind of running into uh, it's, I, I went and looked at a um, little bit of excavation, I guess you could call it, down, down on Pine Hill mm -hmm. in uh, like steep slope. It's a hell of a steep slope, but. <laughs> Where do you call that? It like I got no definition. I got mm -hmm. no teeth on it. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying well, to. Well, figure well, construction that out. is different. I think the construction this is, is like defined, like, as far yeah. as I know, as a three to one. Anything beyond a three to one is a steep slope. We need to have it's it in the LUL. Mm -hmm. So hey, Les, you just got yourself a job. Write a definition for sleep, steep slopes. See? Anything <laughs> over three to one. There you go. Bring it. <laughs> Bring it. See how easy that was? Yeah. <laughs> Bring it to I mean, that's eating. a pretty standard. But that's just for our two. Uh, What's our two? Pretty standard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's only in R3, though. Get <laughs> well, you know, uh, you also, if you... Okay, please do. Yeah. If you go into uh, what Envision Berwick put out here, mm -hmm. uh, in their, their last thing, um, uh, where they're talking about cluster developments, they, they also use the term prime agriculture land prime forest land and towns prime far, uh, farmland and agricultural district. What is prime? Yeah, is there a definition subjective. of prime? Yeah, that's is there subprime too? Yes, actually yeah. there is. <laughs> yeah. <Of course. laughs> We're not ready for prime time. Uh, there, there actually is, whether it's, it's called out in the LUO, I don't know, but yeah. I will look. Okay. I was kind of talking to James with that and that what he told me it's based on soil uh, oh, soil yeah. quality yeah. here. Okay. There's a soil map. Oh, Hannah. Hannah's State talking. puts out a, a soils map and it determines prime farmland and farmland of statewide significance, I think, are the two breakdowns. And it it's dependent on the types of soils and how they drain and all that kind of stuff. 
forgot you were here, Hannah. Sorry. Hi. Great. But, I mean, a, another That's question that I brought up with James is after a certain amount of time, that prime soil changes. Like, you give it three years and you're having something totally different than what was grassland. You're not having grassland anymore. You now have vines. You have other types of weeds. You have uh, quick-growing trees that all change. The water tables change. Yeah, the water table changes. It, yeah, I don't know how often it's updated, but... Above right. my pay grade, yeah. above hers, too. Did they, did they use the U.S. Geological Survey for that? Do you know? Um, it's, it's a... Mm, let me see. It's... Club Soil Survey. It's USDA... I think that does yeah, it. Oh, well, this particular one was talking about R3, so that's uh, farm farmland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all agriculture. So as long as we know that there is something considered prime farm, or I know now, mm -hmm. there's something mm -hmm. considered prime, and that's really something that's yeah. uh, on some map somewhere, that's good to know. And I think that in reading things, a lot of times I get lost in legalese because everything gets defined. Mm. You know, you read a, a sentence that's supposed to say one thing, but ten times it tells you what the words that you just read mean, mm -hmm. which are important, right? But um, I don't want to get lost in it either. I mean, there's some times when I think that we can read it and get the gist of what they're talking about, but somebody else might argue, well, mm -hmm. that's not really what I think it means. So mm -hmm. I guess we're going back and back forth. And we kind of need, need, need the definitions. definitions. There's one, there's part, one part, and, and I know we're not going to get into this, but, but there's one part in one of the things, things where it talks, talks about how, how a tiered, tiered system, system of permits, permits will help local, local developers, but not, not big, big developers. developers. Well, well, okay, okay that's, that's kind of, kind of a, a really vague, vague way, way of saying, saying you know, we don't want you here. Right, and we have to be careful about not limiting somebody's ability to develop a land if they bought it, whether they're from Berwick or from... You know, New York, New York, right. right. So, and, and like how, like how I'll, I'll quote Tom, Tom right again. again. Um, uh, we need to be we welcoming, welcoming to all. To correct. Correct. Well, and I think I think that we, we, might, we as well might as well just talk, talk about some of this stuff, stuff because I I, I really, I really you know this, you know, this uh, gentleman, this John Hasbrook, uh, uh, email particularly stood out to me. And you know, because one of the things that we talked about with the attorney was that, you know, denying somebody's use of this land mm -hmm. is denying them their constitutional rights. That's correct. And, you know, this guy makes, makes a really good really point. point. The son of a farmer. Same scenario Tom Wright was talking about. And, um, you know, he basically says in here, uh, I can't find it right off the top, but basically he says in here that, he, that, you know, you know, you basically take away the value of somebody's property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can, you can only develop, develop a certain amount of it. Right, so somebody has 50 acres and a big developer might pay a million dollars for this property, but a local guy can't pay a million dollars, so, you, you know, you basically, basically take, that take that property from that guy, you know, might be all he has in his life, right? right. His, his whole estate. And he's burdened with the taxes on it, too. He's burdened, he's burdened with the taxes on it. Taxes on it. So, so I think that that's, that's an important, important piece to piece think about, too, you know, so. There's a fine line. I'm, 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 not, I'm, not, I'm not of that camp of, of, of you know, you know stopping outside the developers from developing because, you know, when you know, I first moved to this town, town you, know, you know, nobody, nobody was developed. developed. There were very, very, very few developers. developers. And what does that, does that mean? Well, everybody, everybody has, has to meet the same land use. Right. right. Yeah. We, we don't, don't have, have special, special local, 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 right, right. They're just what they are. Doesn't matter what it says on the truck, trust bringing the equipment in. Right, right. Yeah, right. I agree, and, and, and the person who's home on the land is mm -hmm. benefiting from that. And in times mm -hmm. like today, where everything was mm -hmm. crazy high mm -hmm. through the roof, you know? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's good. Good. It, it was, it was nice, nice to see the counter. A counter, a counter opinion. opinion. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought it was well written. Well written. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right. So moving, so moving on, on now. Okay. 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 Findings, Findings of fact approval. approval. We have, we have a bond. One, two, three, four, four five, five, six, six of them. I have one question, question on, on the Wentworth Solar, solar uh, with, with regard to the surety bond, bond for decommissioning. For decommissioning. In the condition, it does, does not, not 
specifically, specifically talked talk about, about uh, the re recalculation of the periodicity. I know we've, 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 talked, we've talked about, about that before. before. But yeah, legal the state states that all up now, right? That, that, yeah, 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 the state, 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 state has uh, uh, mandates okay. that, that, that recommissioning should be a certain number of percentage of money or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Kind of taking it, it, it's after, after 15 years, years, I think it is, and then five years, every five years after that. And yeah. Okay. I know I we, we talked about this when this project was approved, and I know, yeah. Phil, you had asked for that to be a condition, and I'm pretty oh. sure we ended with the conclusion that that is a requirement by the state by some licensing somebody right. um that okay. they have to do the revaluation so we didn't need to make it a specific condition by this board since they're already required to do it that was right. why i left it off i'd like to make a motion that we uh find that complete approve the final approved plan. approve is that what we're looking for yeah approve the final yeah. all right yeah. Yeah. Uh, i will second make that Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Who's that one? Next is Norman Court, Major Subdivision. Find these effects. I'm going to recuse myself. <laughs> Thank you, Les. <laughs> no outliers. And this one was lengthy because it was also technically a conditional use. So. There's a lot of standards listed oh, in this one. Yeah. <laughs> Looks different from a subdivision would. Yeah. Thank you for taking that one, Hannah. <laughs> Which all the standards have been met. Yes. There are no waivers. Well, I assume these wouldn't be put in front of us unless all of the standards were met, correct? Correct. <laughs> Hopefully you wouldn't have approved it at all. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I'll make a motion that we find the uh, finding of fact. Nope, we approve the findings of fact. We approve the, the finding of fact. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right, there's that one. Next is Silver Therapeutics. Conditional use and site plan review. And it's what for just the bigger uh, driveway, yeah, yeah. Large, the parking, parking lot. lot. Yeah. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. The 30 cars. Or something. Yeah. In their conditions, where any modifications to this site plan as approved must be reviewed and approved by the planning board, and the applicant must obtain all necessary state and local permits for construction. Somebody, I don't want to make all the motions. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion that we approve the finding of facts for Silver Therapeutics. I will second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Thanks. All right, there's that. Next is Navina State Subdivision Amendment. Well, Again, I'll recuse adjustment. myself. And this was pretty, pretty straightforward. I'll make a motion that we approve the findings of fact. I will second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right. Next is JoJo's Cafe. JoJo Cafe, conditional use. They're up and running, right? They yes, are. yes they are. Awesome. I will make a motion to approve the findings of fact for JoJo's Cafe. I will second. Further discussion? All in favor? I was not here during that, so I'll okay. not vote. You'll abstain? Abstain. Yeah. Okay. Next is Brian's trailer repair. This one was just the, for the waiver for the lot size. Is that mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Was it the second employee? employee. For the second employee. <laughs> second employee. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And with the land use yeah, update, the, the iron he didn't need to no have the, the, yes. the more the space. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? All right. There's that. Next is the sec second public comment. Seeing no one's here, I'm going to close the public comment. And next is informational items. Do you have anything, Irish or Terry? Um, did you want me to address that email? Okay. Yes, please. So I was uh, 
it was inquired of me why some of the uh, businesses across the street have gone before the planning board and some have not. And it was brought to my attention that there was actually an email exchange. Uh, Mike has a copy of it. I, may I come grab it? Yep. This is with Lee J and James. Yes. Oh, I just want to grab the date off of this. So, long story short, um, back on December 8th of 2022, um, Lee J responded that there's really nothing for the planning board to review in regards to businesses going over there because all of the things that you guys would typically review for were already reviewed by Lee J. The reason you guys did see some of the businesses over there was because James had made the decision uh, because he wasn't certain prior to that. He instructed Tammy, who was the planner at the time, to require those businesses to come before the board. But there's really nothing for the board to review if they meet the ability to use the, you know, use the space, then they get to use the space. So, um, so how does that, and I, I mean, just playing devil's advocate, case in point, uh, you know, the cafe we just approved, right? Mm -hmm. how, how is that different? Because the cafe that you guys just approved, mm -hmm. you guys had to review it. You had to, it had to come before the board so that it could go to the planners to be reviewed for things like parking and accessibility or what have you, all mm -hmm. the little pieces that we look for to make sure that it actually complies with our ordinances. Mm -hmm. That entire site was reviewed as mm -hmm. one big piece. So all those little pieces that you guys would typically be looking for have already been have met. already been reviewed and approved by Lee J. So all so future businesses well, going in there, is that how that's gonna be? They already have the right number of parking spaces, yep. they already have the right yep. size building. To already. answer your question, yes yep. and no. Yep. Okay? okay. It's not a definite yes because for example, one of There's the things that we were uses. talking about that James um, James was actually going to float by Lee J. They may have to come back because they specified most of the buildings. Let me see if I can. I'm clear as mud, and I apologize. This is cold. It's got my whole head going. Um, basically, what it amounts up to is they had most of their areas, most of their buildings did not have a specified use. Mm -hmm. So, if, but they were all reviewed as though they were potentially any use, except. This is where there's some confusion that we have to check into. They did label, for example, the, the point of contention right now, they labeled one particular spot to be a bank. The bank has backed out. The bank is no longer going to be there. They're looking at a convenience store. Because they specifically called out that use, we're probably going to make them come before you to change that specific use for that specific place because they specified it. But otherwise, Lee J reviewed this as a site as a whole. And that's why there's also a condition there that before they build the last building, because the biggest thing is with this type of a, of a development, especially when you're having commercial and residential in the same spot, is parking. Right? We all know parking's a big problem. Parking takes up a lot of space. The town of Berwick is trying to get away from some of the more archaic views of parking that will leave you with big empty lots like Walmart and Home Depot have just because somebody says so. Um, but before they can put up their last building, they do have to be have the whole project reviewed again. And if they do not meet the parking requirements for all combined uses, then they can't put that last building up because they'll have to dedicate that space to parking or they'll have to build something for parking. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of the convoluted long and short of it. A question yes. on what you said when you say Lee J reviewed the plans. Well, mm -hmm. and, and the planning board as well. Yes. It's not just Lee J. The plans that were reviewed did not have specifics. It had a building this many square feet with nothing in it, no businesses or anything defined. How could they know? Well, they know that all the first floor is commercial. Mm -hmm. okay. I know. I'm talking about this one over here. Yeah. It was just an open space. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they, so what they did was, it's my understanding, and Hannah, correct me if I'm wrong, when they were review, reviewing the edge, they were reviewing it as though more towards what can, what uses would we not allow there versus mm -hmm. what could we. No, so I understand what you're saying. I'm just, yeah. if they're looking 
to review something, there was nothing there to review other than. Right. I, th I think I'm with you, and I, I think the, the question I would ask is: so it, it almost seems like they put this building before the planning board, and they said, "Okay, there's going to be mixed nine use. units, yeah. mixed use, or something," yeah. and they're going to be mixed use. So then, mixed use has a category of businesses that are approved for mixed use, or, mm -hmm. or I guess it's not mixed use, right? It's yeah. commercial use. No, commercial mixed use, use would include residential. Right. Mm -hmm. So, well, so that could be a pizza shop. It. it could be a you know, because because there is a there's like a dental clinic in there, right? Yeah, right. But yep. that came before the board. Yeah, that, me, that's the confusion. Is so. Let we, me read this to you directly okay. instead of trying so to summarize. Well, I was hoping to make it a little shorter fitness. by summarizing yeah. it, mm -hmm. but um, so he says uh, it's important to know there is no agreement that lays it out. Da da da. As you're aware, during the original review of the project, and this is from Lee J, by the way. Uh, during the original review of the project, I had been involved by assisting the planning board through the review process. As part of that process, the board looked at all of the aspects of the development from sewer and water layouts as well as capacity issues, traffic impacts based on full build-out as well as the parking for the entire lot. As your last planner had left, it was brought to my attention the developer and prospective businesses were being required to go to the planning board for approvals, and then I questioned why. They were uses that were proposed in existing buildings, and in this particular case, one that was already constructed. I thought it did not make sense to make a small business go through a costly process for something already been reviewed for all the impacts they could potentially create. It seems redundant to do this. As for the rest of the development, each building on the approved plan has a designated use, i.e. housing, coffee shop, bank, etc. It seems unless the use were to change to say light industry or warehouse use, it made no sense to go back through planning board since the potential impacts have already been reviewed for a particular use in a particular structure. If the use, building footprint, parking lot design, or some other aspect of the project were to change, they should come back for review. So basically they reviewed, according to Lee J's email, which December 8th, uh, he wrote that, uh, that so a year ago, um, he stated that they existed that building had already had all the potential existing uses and that unless it was changed to something that would be so when you're looking at from a, a planning and a code perspective <coughs> things like uh, warehouse or, or industrial uses are different than any sort of retail any sort of medical those are different so it got approved for a category of businesses more mm -hmm. or less yes it got approved for that that lighter use category versus a so hazard there are any risk. checks and balances or is it just willy-nilly whoever wants to lease a spot in there they have like to come through me public but what about public comment any any of that stuff are we just forgoing all of that and it, it's between you and Lee J to assess out who, who gets in who doesn't get in because I, I just, to me, that, and I'm just, maybe I'm, I don't fully grasp the process, but it, it just seems, for lack of a better term, no process. I mean, we go through all of this, like whenever a new business wants to go into a building, they come before the board, they present, and they say, this is what we want to bring to your town, and this is why, and, and this is the benefit. And, and I think there's a lot of value in that for the viewers and, and the townspeople to get to know the business owner and what, what they're bringing. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I'm 50-50 on this one for the edge, okay? Yeah. And I'm going to tell you why. Because from my end of things, something like that, and no offense, Hannah, to you or Lee J for any of this, something like that, does it make sense to have a, a grouping or listing, so to speak, of approved uses? Absolutely. My problem is I don't see anywhere where those specific approved uses were called out for that development. Right. And that's something that I think I may request them to provide a list of what they're anticipating their proposed uses because to me, what I would do, honestly, this is the 50, that was the 50 against. The 54 is if I were guiding them through this process right now, I would tell them, give me, here's the, here's the list of approved uses in this town. You tell me what you think you might put in there so we can review it for all of them, specifically to prevent you guys from having to see each one. Because here's the reality. While you might say, and yes, I get it, public comment, it's important for people to have their voices heard. If, there's, if they meet all the performance standards, it's not like in a subdivision, no offense to the developers here, um, you know, in a subdivision you have an opportunity for the, I know, I'll get him a lollipop after and make him feel better. Um, 
in the development, you have the opportunity. We've had some great discourse between abutters and um, developers and developers engineers with, you know, I'd like to see this. This makes it more palatable, et cetera. It's a business. The buildings are already built. What are they going to come and say? I don't want it in my town. Well, it's an approved use. I, I just you think we need to be. You get to say you don't want it, but it doesn't mean that you guys can do anything about it. Right. Fair enough. I, I just want us to be sensitive to the optics, okay? The, the optics on this are here's this new contentious development, which, which it is to some people in the town. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a great thing for our town. The growth, the, the town center, it's going to be it's going to be great. But we are delegating that process, and, and I have a lot of respect for Lee J and a lot of respect for SMPDC and everything that they do for us, but we are delegating that authority and that process to somebody that does not even live in our town. And I think that the optics on that from the outside looking in, I, I just want us to be sensitive to that. Well, and, I, don't, and I don't think that Lee J or SMPDC <laughs> has the say on what's the use for that. Like, so yeah, they're, we're, we're not reviewing any of the business. Right. They're, they're going to Irish. Get, they're yeah. going to Irish to put a business in. Okay. And if it's an approved as long use as it's a light, area. like a retail light use commercial, it's it's already okayed. Mm -hmm. if Don't we have yeah. in our land use ordinance businesses that we can't have in town? Are there yes. a few that we can't have? Yes. yes. So we already have a limit. Yeah. Of yeah. Okay. From and here up, you can, uh, you right. know. Aroma right. Joe's, think, Dunkin' think, Donuts, I think my bank. thing is, you know, if you, if, if you, like that, that basically is like a strip mall. Yeah. Yep. So if you got a strip mall approved for whoever leases retail it, use. Leases it. Right. Whoever, whoever leases, leases it, leases it. Leases it. Fair yeah. enough. But if you have yeah. it for retail use, and then they want to put a restaurant in there, mm -hmm. then, then I would see that as having to come back in front of the planning board. I think that's right. For example. Right. Review. That's reasonable. So the bank change, and just like. dummy terms. Another thing. I was trying to be clear that that's what happened. Yeah. Makes sense. It's similar to like where, and I'm going to, I don't know. If I'm getting poop for this, but let me throw out a new business name for you, Untrucked. Mm -hmm. When they were going in there, I was like, "Uh, you guys are opening when? Because you guys haven't been before the planning board." But in looking at it, that use was already yeah. an allowed use in that spot because yeah. it's been I, a restaurant unbeknownst to me, it times. has been a restaurant yep. since apparently mm -hmm. forever. Forever. Um, yeah. I'm really mad that I can't eat right now because. <laughs> Grilled cheese, they have a grilled cheese truck. Um, but that being said, if that restaurant then goes, I uh, know no ill will towards untrucked, but um, let's say they decide they're going to relocate, they're going to move somewhere else, they, something happens, and um, somebody wants to put a storefront in there, then no, that's not the same use. They'll gotcha. have to come back. So can they put in something? Yes. Can it? be just all willy-nilly no we do have guidelines and I do have to follow them and honestly if there's any question if I have any question as to whether or not that use was something that was part of the approval um, not only will I refer to Lee J but honestly if I have to make the decision I'd like to think you all know by now well you two are newer but I think the rest of you know by now I will always err on the side of caution so if I'm not sure that that use should be allowed without being viewed by the planning board, I'm going to make them come here. It's my choice, ultimately, mm -hmm. to force them through there, unless James vetoes me. <laughs> but if I refuse to issue them an occupancy for their business without them coming here, then I think I think that's one of the big things. So I, I have I have two bits of homework for before the 14th. One is that overlay district, and the other one is to. I want to make a recommendation for um, being able to do administrative changes you being able to do administrative changes versus having mm -hmm. back from a planning board for simple things. Yeah, yeah. I want to see it. I, something that I've talked with Lee J and Hannah about, but I don't know if it's ever gotten pushed forward more that I, I was hoping yeah. to go to the board. Uh, with like the push case in point, like a lot line adjustment. You know, a lot that's line something adjustment that could or be easily done through you and it doesn't need to involve us. something that staff level but I do want to specify right. in case anybody feels like getting creative and writing this um, I'm looking for a staff level review which would be myself 
planning, whether that be Terry right. or Hannah, yeah. please fire all of the businesses. I don't want to ever be the only one making a decision unless it's right. only. Right. It needs to yeah, be a collective. I don't know yeah. how you. I don't know how you detail and spell that out, but you know. I already like have it line. from Lee J from another yeah. municipality, so I'll if, maybe yeah. I'll forward that to the. Board. Is it, it's a common thing that some towns do um, for things like minor conditional uses. You know, if you're not building. A new building, you know, I'm going to go in and I want to sell, I don't know, rocks. You're not going to have, I'm going to sell rocks online. I'm not going to have customers. I'm not going to, coming into my building, I'm not going to have XYZ types of, um, I'm not building a new building. I'm not doing a new parking lot. All that kind of stuff that typically the board would look at that application and say, okay, that doesn't apply. Um, I think we can waive the site walk. Um, things like that would go to the staff review committee. So the people who would typically be involved from the planning board meeting, like the fire, like the police, like code, like planning, um, they all still get to weigh in. But we don't need to go through the full planning board process to right. approve what right. the board would ultimately approve after a much lengthier thing. Yeah. It'll cut out at least a month, if not yeah, more. Yeah. <laughs> of the process. Them, oh, yeah. them Which is what integrity money. construction just went through getting the right, right. Yeah, exactly. And and typically in those processes, there's something written into the ordinance where um, if at any point anybody involved in the staff level review thinks that it needs further review by the planning board, they can kick it up to the planning board and that yeah. applicant has to come in front of the board and continue yeah. the full process that they would have otherwise. That yeah. gives everybody, so it's not an all on mm -hmm. me, and I don't become the. I never want any. I never want to be put in a position where anybody feels like I'm the be all end all of a process. You don't want to be the dictator. No. <laughs> no. 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 I can't even dictate myself for crying out loud. You want to dictate a town? I know. What'd you say? I said she's not like that. <laughs> I'll slip you that 50 for second right. on the way out. <laughs> All right. I think that was pretty good. Any other informational items? I have just one real okay. quick one. Um, yeah. A few months ago, we talked about um, not really having a strict set of rules or guidelines for the committee, for the um, for the planning board to run by um, for... Um, what am I trying to think of the... No Roberts rules. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, did, we didn't have bylaws. That's what right, I'm trying to right, say. Yeah. So... Um, if, if the board permits, um, I would like to put together a, a rough draft of um, maybe some bylaws to look at, to review, and possibly accept for the board. Yeah, as long as it's not the whole Robert's no, Rules no, no, of no, Order. No, 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 no. Have, have you seen be, that book? I have. It's it's a so big book. It, it won't be that. I have it. It's, big book. Yeah, it won't be that. No, it'll be. It'll pertain only to really what we do. Yeah. Um, and be simplified in English, mm -hmm. so <laughs> that we know what it means. Yep. Okay. And it's just a rough draft, so that obviously it's a starting point. Yep. Yeah. So that'd be great. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. I don't think I have anything for you. Adjournment. If there are no further items for consideration from the esteemed Burgess meeting room in the depths of the Berwick Town Hall. I'll make a motion that we adjourn. A second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. Good night. Aye.